The skill of the dwarves was unequaled, fashioning objects of great beauty. Alright, Michael Van, and welcome back to another Era Queen Caledron video. This is a workbench video, and I am working on my Moria display right now. This is an older display that I made. Bit of a mountaintop, bit of a cave, some bones and things down inside the door. The outside of the door is from the Games Workshop Moria kit. This is the actual um, Moria door that comes in the Billin's Tomb kit. A little bit of water so I can mount the watcher in the water there. And right now what I'm doing is carving up some foam and getting some more pieces ready. So <laughs> this is me doing a little bit of a live demo. We'll see how this goes. But these foam pieces, if you cut them up right, can look like a whole lot of different things. They can look like um, platforms. They can look like rock formations. They can look like decent scatter. Or if you're really careful, they can actually look like you know, full-on caves. So I am going to try to mount this camera in the tripod here. We'll see how this goes. And I'm going to try to demo some of this live. Here's how I have been working on some rock scatter. This is going to become the base of a Moria cave. It's really not overly difficult. Just peek around the camera and see if I can see what I'm doing here. The idea here is that you want to take a sheet of one inch XPS foam. This is building foam. It's used commonly in the building industry. It comes in large, large sheets two foot by four foot. Construction workers use this stuff all the time. They build walls out of it. You can get it in various thicknesses. Um, I like to use the one inch stuff, but there's a lot of it available in different shapes. And what I'm working on right now is gonna be the, the floor of a, a broken floor with the chasm in the middle that is gonna be the first deep in my Moria board. It's gonna go underneath this other cave that I showed you a moment ago. And it's gonna have very large pillars right here that are 5 inch square on the bottom and 12 inch tall right out of the movie and so I thought what I'd show you on the video quickly here is how you make these cuts it's really really simple once you've tried it once you never forget it the goal though is to have a bit of a planned chaos to it uh, it is random but sort of planned random if you can follow my logic there and there's really nothing much to this it's quite simple cutting so to get some planned randomness, all of this is, this is a serrated knife edge. Hopefully you can see that good in the camera. Um, and it doesn't even matter what kind of depth to the blade. You just want to have enough that you can actually make a bit of a cut out of this. And honestly, all you do is cut sawing motions, we weaving back and forth, and a little bit of planned chaos to it, nice and random. Shallow cuts will end up giving you this scuffed feeling across the top. And for maximal effect, you just want to make it a little bit random. Some of these cuts will be deeper than others. is really all there is to it. The more you cut this, the more rough it's going to look. A little bit later I'm going to actually draw on these. You can draw on these with pen. It's actually pretty easy to draw on them with pen. Um, and when you draw on it with pen you can do things like make um, squares that would have been tiles from some kind of a dwarven kingdom in the ancient past. And that's literally all it takes. You can draw these at whatever scale you like. I usually go for one inch square. I'll measure them off. And as you trace those down and throughout, it'll end up looking like tiles. But in this case, what I want is tiles that are highly damaged. So I'm gonna wait until I put my pillar on there. I'll trace out the base of this. <laughs> now watch out, this foam just sticks everywhere. I'm gonna get sticking all over me sticks to itself. There will be little bits on the back. So I am cutting over a garbage can and I am sweeping regularly into that garbage can to try to minimize it. You'll often often find that the cuts leave very uneven edges that are flaky. So you just peel all the flakes off of there and then once they're all peeled you get these nice rough cavernous edges. They look very sort of rocky like and it works really 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 well as rocky scattered terrain or cave terrain. Uh, and of course what I'm going for here is Moria, so it, it, the, the rockier and more cave-like it looks, the better. So that's a bit of a work in progress cut right there. We'll show you more 
in the future in another video once I get some of this put together. It's going to look pretty epic once it gets the big Moria pillars standing in the middle of this. But I've got a lot of work to do to get there, so I'll do that off camera. And we'll show it to you again later. Maybe for the moment what I will do, get you back off of the tripod here. I'll show you when this is done, if you scrape the edges up really well, you can get these kinds of formations. There's nothing glued on there that is just foam. It's just cut with the knife. And once it's painted, it'll end up looking like that. Now back here, this is squared foam that has um, glue, a layer of glue on it, and then a bunch of random gravels on top of the glue. And then up here on the top of this cave, again, this is all just cut foam. There's nothing glued on top of that. So you can combine the effects. You can do a little bit of gravel on it. You can do a little bit of cut foam on it. I've glued some scatter snow flock on top of that. And then some of my random offcut pieces I've kept and used to make further rock outcroppings. If you look close inside the cave, I've glued some of the scattered cuts underneath the top to hang as sort of stalagmites from the roof. Stalagmites, stalactites, I can't remember which is which. But I've hung them from the roof. So you can do a lot here just with a knife and a chunk of foam. And then this is all just the foam that's all carved up with that knife. Same technique I was using earlier, just you know, random sort of along the sides and then every now and then some of the gashes that you see in there this is the knife just sort of fiercely into the surface or even scraping across the surface sometimes excuse the shading there but yeah that's all I did this is a very simple piece right here fairly square not a whole lot of challenging cuts around the side um, and then uh, spray primed black, spray primed gray on top of the black but unevenly so you see some of the black through in some spots I, I graveled over that first of course before I, uh, before I painted that sorry um, yeah and then once you've got a couple layers of paint on there you can start adding some washes you can add some some ground effect this is a ghrelin earth um, I've forgotten the name of this games workshop paint but it's a, it's a gritty sandy paint that has some sand in the paint so it gives some really nice texture and it doesn't take much to make a sort of dirty cave ground. You can add a couple of growing things in there that are trying their best to grow in the midst of an otherwise very dead environment. So yeah, that's all it takes. A knife, some foam, a little bit of time and creativity, and a little bit of organized planned chaos. All right, so I just spent a whole bunch of effort working on creating this big display case, big display tray, out of cut foam that's got all kinds of angles and bevels to it. I've gone around the edges all of the edges because I have a sheet of masonite under here. You can see the masonite that I'm sitting on. I, I cut a piece of this same sheet actually to roughly the same shape as my um, as my army display tray here. It's a big tray. I've got room for my whole army on this tray. It's a sheet of masonite on the bottom. It's like a paperboard. Some places sell this and call it paperboard. Very inexpensive and it's reasonably useful. It's, it's, it's got lots of purposes. Um, and then I glued loose gravel around the bottom edge of my foam sheet here. I cut this sheet from XPS foam. It's just the pink building foam. Different companies make it different colors. But you know, here's what I used. It's just a sheet of pink foam. It was about an inch thick. And I cut it with a knife. So there's all kinds of sort of scuffed up edges along this. Which means that it looks fabulous, but it it has some problems when you go to actually work with it. It'll flake and little pieces come off sometimes. And there was a gap that was inconsistent along the bottom edge. So I, I poured PVA glue on there. I used carpenter's glue and I have some mixed gravel. Just you know, random textures. There's really nothing special to this gravel except that it's mixed. I poured that all over the edge. And then I mixed Mod Podge and cheap paint, black paint, about 50-50. There's another great video on um, Black Magic um, Workshop. I can give you a link to that, and and just painted it on, and it I painted it on very liberally. I made a nice thick coat along here to cover up all the loose gravel as evenly as I could. I've already, as you can see, I've already spray primed this piece, and I've turned it gray. Um, I spray primed it black, and then I put a layer of gray on top of that after painting all the foam with my Podge, um, because that seals it so that the spray paint won't eat the foam. Because of course. Lots of spray paints will eat the foam. Uh, but yeah, the Mod Podge sealed it perfectly. I was really happy. This is nice and durable now. It's got a bit of a firmness to it that isn't there. When you just cut the foam, it feels flaky and you can scratch it with your fingernails and pull pieces away. And I did that on purpose in some places. I pulled some pieces out of the edges. And, but then when I painted it with Mod Podge, it got 
it got this nice firm texture to it. So I've done the same as I put gravel around the bottom. I painted that with Mod Podge as well. And now I'm going to reprime this and seal that down and then dry brush the whole thing so it looks like gravel. So we'll come back later and we'll show you how this looks, but it's coming together. I'm really happy with this. This is going to be my Moria display tray for my Moria army. And um, these tower, or these pillars were printed from Thingiverse. They're 3D printed on a 3D printer. And uh, you can look at our 3D print playlist for some help on how to do that. I'm really happy with how this display is coming together. Not done. Lots of painting yet to do. And then when I get to the middle here, I've got some other work to do. I actually painted a string of Mod Podge up through the middle of this as well because it will seal with a bit of a gloss shine to it. I'm trying to make it look like there's different depth to the black. Now, this is a bit of a chasm that falls down in between. So I'm going to be spraying black, or sorry, gray all around these edges just to join those edges up nicely with the board underneath it. There's more loose gravel that just fills up all the gaps between the foam and the masonite sheet underneath it. But here I'm going to use some dull stuffing and make it look like there's a bit of a mist rising through the crack. So we'll get to that once this is dry and once I've put some gray spray around all of these edges again and sort of even that all up again with the rest of the display behind it. So we're getting there. And then we'll put all the Moria monsters on it and we're good to go. All right, I'm done. Here it is. Long time coming. Sorry it's taken so long to finish this video. Um, but this is my foam based on top of masonite with some 3D printing and some doll stuffing and a bit of paint. This is my Moria display. And it honestly was not very hard to build. It took me time, but only because I've got so much going on in my life right now. Um, so I'm going to try to prop this up on the tripod. Thanks for your patience here with me putzing around on this. So again, just quick reminders, this is one inch XPS foam, building foam that is used commonly in the building industry, usually for insulating walls. Sometimes it'll be you know, garages and other places like that. This is a sheet. I got it as a four by eight sheet from the hardware store of masonite board, sometimes called paperboard, really thin. It has just layers of cardboard. Um, cuts up really easily. And um, when it's all cut up, it's really easy to make it into all kinds of great shapes. So for my purposes, I you know, made a big square of it. That's the bottom of my display. And I just you know made a big square of it. And um, it's you know, reasonably stable. It, it's got a bit of hardy depth to it. It will bend. If I carry this thing carelessly, it, it will bend in the middle. You can see it's just wiggling a little bit while I pull on the towers. Um, so you do have to be careful with it. Ideally, if you're going to have something that's needing some more strength underneath it, you can look at actually making the base of your board out of this foam as well, or having a consistent full layer of the foam all the way across the masonite, and that'll be a lot stronger than just the masonite by itself. Uh, so the foam and the masonite go well together, um, and then all the rest of the steps I've shown you already. So this is just cut up with a serrated knife, um, painted with Mod Podge. I get Mod Podge cheap from a couple craft stores around here. This is 50% dollar store black paint with 50% Mod Podge. Give it a good shake and then it i mean it works perfect it's not magic you don't need it to be exactly 50 percent if you get the ratios off it's fine but what it means is when you paint with the mod podge you can see where you've used it so if all the foam is black then i can hit it with spray paint after that and it won't eat the foam otherwise spray paint will eat the foam so i did that spray painted the whole thing black after i had mod podged it all these lines are just a ruler and a pencil you just use the pencil to push down into the into the uh, foam in this case, I was looking for rough lines to make it look more like a ruin. And if you really needed that to be smooth, you'd probably want to use some more careful tools than what I used. But for me, a ruler and a pencil was perfect. This is 3D printed. The file is on Thingiverse. It's free. You can download it if you're into 3D printing. It's a really nice file. I printed a few of these so I could make a board out of them, not just a display board like this, but an actual 4x4 game surface. And then this is doll stuffing. We had some old dolls that got ripped, so I kept some of the stuffing. And, I mean, you can stretch it to any any amount of consistencies. You can make it into all kinds of stuff. I've used that for um, smoke from a pipe. I've spray-painted some of that black to make a fire. And this is just mist in a canyon. So, there you go. This is my Moria display board. Hope you've enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Um, I wanted to post this video right now because in Ontario, Canada, we're actually working on a series of competitions because we can't have tournaments. Our, our government has a bunch of restrictions in place because of COVID-19. 
So right now we are doing challenges, painting competitions and terrain competitions, and this is a really easy display board to make for a relatively new craftsman. I consider myself to be a bit of a novice still, a lot to learn, but I've had some fun and I've learned some good lessons, so hopefully sharing these lessons on these videos is helpful to some of you. So please remember to give the video a like, share, and subscribe, and uh, my go Venon, and we'll be back again soon.